right 20 april 2024 and today i'm going to be giving you the saturday update this is usually a very short update because obviously people are tired from friday and today i want to go through what is going to happen next given the massive developments in the zimbabwe military so i'm going to be taking you through what my sources have been telling me and i'll also take you through one or two other stories but i'll keep this very very short so initially the arrangement that had been put in place by mnangagwa uh, that was just after the elections was for general valerius Banda to come into uh, zanu pf and eventually go into the government of zimbabwe as vice president so that was the original plan but that plan was blocked and you saw that uh, uh, Valerius Wanda was unable to go into ZANU PF. Mnangagwa had to reverse his appointment of um, Valerius Wanda into the Central Committee of ZANU PF. So my sources have now given me an update on what's transpiring, and we're going to see quite a lot taking place in the near future. And as I said, you must be looking at what is happening in the military because a lot of developments are going to take place in the Zimbabwe military. And the next changes that you're going to see are going to be connected to the Zimbabwe military in Zimbabwe, especially in this post Mnangagwa era, where Mnangagwa is planning for his next move, and the guys that are coming in are planning for their next move. So everyone is making a plan. There's two groups, Mnangagwa who's going out, and the new group that is coming in, and then General Shwenga, who is next in line. So I want to take you through uh, th that potential move that Mnangagwa is going to make. Obviously, I don't know when he's going to make it, but my sources say that Mohadi is probably going to be retired for health reasons. And then we're going to see uh, Valerius Panda becoming vice president together with General Chwenga. So within the next few months, you're going to see Valerius Panda, General Chwenga being the vice presidents. And potentially, if Sanyatwe is not fired, then he's going to become the ZDF commander. That was the original plan. But it seems that this has changed, and he's going to become an ambassador. They're going to remove and put him back into being an ambassador. So Sanyatwe has gone through a lot of changes. Uh, he was initially the boss of the uh, presidential guard during the, um, uh, the coup. That is, he was part of the National Reaction Force, uh, the people that were involved in that shootout, and he's under sanctions for that particular shootout where eight Zimbabweans were killed on 1 August. But Mnangagwa has confidence in Sanyatwe, that's why he made him the commander of the Zimbabwe National Army. However, the dynamics in our politics is changing because of factional fighting within ZANU-PF. And as I said, my sources say Sanyatwe is probably going to be fired very soon and is going to be pushed into an ambassadorial position. So an ambassadorial position outside of Zimbabwe, and Valerius Panda is going to be moved out and become vice president. Mohad is going to be removed, and then he will be retired for health reasons. So we're probably going to see two people as vice president, that is General Chwenga and Valerius Panda, within the very short space to come, or short time to come. So that is something that we must look forward to. And why is it significant? It is significant because someone has to balance General Chwenga. General Chwenga is very strong and very powerful. And General Chwenga has the structures in place. So if you saw what happened to uh, Veja, uh, the, a, a major Veja this weekend, uh, this week, the passing away, and the panic that that accident brought in the Zanupi government, in the Mnangagwa's government, there was a lot of panic and there is a lot of questions about what happened there. As I said, I won't be continuing to deal with that issue. I'll leave it where I did already deal with it last week. But the kind of people that passed away in that accident this week are some of the most high level trainers in Zimbabwe and secret divisions. So people who are in the most critical positions in the Zimbabwe National Army were involved in that accident. Uh, Veja, according to my understanding, was a position that was very, very critical. 
and the role that it played in the military is not normal. It's something very, very high level and very, very uh, important and critical. People that are called when everyone else is finished, <laughs> those are the people that you call uh, an aversion. So, as I said, let's look at the military very, very closely. Let's watch what is going to happen there. It's going to be very, very dramatic within the next few months, starting with that day when Mnangagwa had to turn back from going to Victoria Falls. Everything is on the move. And whoever makes the wrong move is going to lose. So everyone is on their very highest alert right now in the Zimbabwe military. Starting with the guys at the top, uh, everyone knows that they need to protect themselves from the security perspective, but they also have to choose the correct side. So everyone has to choose the correct side. So to recap, my sources say uh, General Anselm Senya to, is likely to be fired and to be pushed into an ambassadorial position again. And then uh, General Valerius Banda will be moved into government as vice president. So I do not know who is going to fill these two gaps that are going to be left in the military, which is the commander of the Zimbabwe Defense Forces, CDF, and also the, Zimbabwe of the, Zimbabwe, uh, the commander of the Zimbabwe National Army, who is going to be in those positions. We've already seen changes where Olson Moyo was moved uh, from the Zimbabwe Air Force. You saw that happening uh, recently, and he was replaced. So let's see what happens in terms of Anselm Sanyatwe. As you can see, uh, General Anselm Sanyatwe here has been in various positions, and I think it would be a very interesting move if he was to be moved away from Zimbabwe once again. But if he was to be promoted to commander of the Defense Forces of Zimbabwe, that will make uh, General Chwenga very, very strong. Uh, he's seen as a Chwenga guy. So let's see what happens. Uh, similar to what happens to what happened to uh, Veja, who was also a Chwenga guy. So the latest wonder here, meant to watch, but also Anselm Sanyatwe, General Anselm Sanyatwe, meant to watch. Two critical positions to watch, and then to see who's going to be replacing them if Nangagwa makes that move. So I'm done with this. I now want to go to the funeral arrangements for the soldiers that passed away. Uh, that is, so let me give you the full list here. So I gave you the full list, and I, I gave you Taban uh, Ngobe here, Major Taban Ngobe. So let me give you the other people who were in the accident. So it was Brigadier General Shadrick Veja, Major Taban Ngobe, Major Mkondis Gumbo, and Sergeant Lenmo Chakabaiwa. And if you see the car that, the, that was involved in the accident, that they are showing, and which is making me very suspicious they're only showing the one car uh, this one here they're not showing the cx5 uh, that they keep talking about so this is the actual car which veja was driving there's conflicting stories on whether it's him who was driving or it was the worker uh, according to uh, people that i've talked to he was left drinking at a certain uh, motel and his employee had gone to the farm they were collecting his cows or something like that so i do not know exactly what was the circumstances around his movements but obviously everything is going to become clear there is a parade that is going to be held on sunday for the five soldiers for the four soldiers a combined uh, parade for uh, the five brigade in Kwekwe. so that is where the these soldiers are going to be remembered so i hope that they publicize that whole thing so that we can see zbc as usual i do not think they are being very open about what's happening here. But I do not expect the suspense to give you what I'm giving you. What I'm giving you here is from my sources who are behind the scenes. This is something that is very, very important. Uh, what happened here is many people are suspicious. So many people from many different areas are suspicious of what happened here. But let's all watch. By Sunday, we'll have more details when the, the parade is held. For the four senior soldiers who died uh, in that head-on collision during the week that is on the 16th now i want to quickly go to the next story which is another uh, security related story so general chwenga uh, ed and uh, some other people went to the house of uh, moyo isaac moyo the commander or boss of the cios so they went there and there was a, 
the body has arrived. So the body of Shumirai has arrived in Zimbabwe. And they, they went to console the family. So you can see that Shumirai's body is already in Zimbabwe now. And there were quite a number of people in the crowd. Uh, I'm sure you can recognize some of the people in this crowd uh, who were consoling the family. There was also, obviously, government communication around this. And you can see that uh, General Chuenga was right next to Moyo there. So he did speak, uh, General Chuenga. So I want to give you a clip of what General Chuenga said at this uh, memorial service and also what Isaac Moyo said. So let's quickly look at what they said. Makao na kurwara kwa ke muka shutika muka namata muka chema asim ngarwa geta kuda kwa A very loving daughter she was. She loved politics. She believed that she was going to overthrow some entrenched opposition members of parliament here in Harare. And she mentioned them by name. Right, so that is the finger of the actual service, the, the memorial service on arrival of the body. And what is going to happen is that there's going to be a funeral for Shumirai in Rutenga on Sunday. So that is where the family is going to bury Shumirai Moyo. She died at 41 years and survived by two sons, Mnyaradzi and Derek. Uh, and as I said, the family was consoled by General Chuenga, uh, President Idi Mnangagwa, and her mother is actually an MP. I didn't know that the mother is an MP. So that was revealed yesterday that she's an MP in Zimbabwe. So let me just show you the coffin here so that you can see uh, what was happening. So this was the coffin of Shumirai Moyo here, 41 years old, uh, who died in Dublin Island. So she's going to be buried on Sunday in Rutenga. That is where the family is going to bury her. I now want to go to my last story. Before I then look at the newspapers, if any newspapers have published. So there's what we call a divorce of the century that is happening in Zimbabwe. And this is to with regards to Marilyn Chihota and Kurawane Chihota. I, I hope this is the picture of Marilyn. Uh, <laughs> I hope so, because this is Marilyn Chihota. She works at uh, uh, West Prop. But I don't think it's her. So if, if I made a mistake, I will, I will retract this. But I think this is the picture. Then we've got a guy here called Kurawone Water. This guy is a prominent real estate guy. And Marilyn is also a prominent real estate person. These guys are at top of the top in the real industry, real estate industry of Zimbabwe. So they had a divorce. They got married in 2017. And they moved to Zimbabwe. But they are best, their businesses are based in Botswana, Tanzania, and South Africa. So I guess they got a lot of money. Kuraone then got a job at NASA. And you know that Kuraone was one of the property guys at NASA who was arrested for some during that investigation, which in included Fumira. So these are top, top people in the real estate industry of Zimbabwe. And the interesting thing about their divorce is that the three, the two had three children. So Kuraone had two children from the past and uh, Marilyn, a child from the past. They brought all their family together in a new house, massive house worth millions in uh, Glenlon. And when they divorced, they had a prenuptial contract. And Kurawone was then supposed to get the house and Marilyn was supposed to move out with nothing. So the judgment came out yesterday and Marilyn is now supposed to get 20% of the value of the house. And Kurawone owes NASA, I think, $80,000 for this house. And he, that is the money that they first of all have to remove. And then they split the house. So interesting story. You can Google it. It's all over the internet. This is the, called the divorce of the century because these guys are big in the real estate industry of Zimbabwe. And they own massive assets inside and outside of Zimbabwe. So very interesting. And then I want to go out some pictures from Sadak. Uh, Sadak had some pictures, but in, in my Sadak, my Sadak is these ones. <laughs> I've got my new Sadak now. This is my Sadak. <laughs> this one. From now on, this is my Sadak. Uh, but I want to show you the real Sadak. They had a Zimbabwe celebration for the independence. So these are our people from Zimbabwe celebrating Sadak. Uh, 
uh, on the 44th independence uh, and it's quite very interesting you can go to the youtube the facebook page of sadak to have a look at this very nice i think the zimbabwean guys have done more well sadak i like what they they've been doing but we need to do more we need a fresh election to come out and Nelson chamisa has given an eight minute speech in which he's explaining everything that he's doing so you can go to the chamisa news channel the chamisa, chamisa news network he has given an eight minute speech and if you are a member of the gambakwe youtube channel you'll be able to go in and watch uh, that video please join the gambakwe news channel and then you obviously could be supporting us on a monthly basis with a small amount if you go there you'll see what chamisa is saying for eight minutes he's laying out what he's planning to do but obviously a fresh election is critical in zimbabwe there's no other way this thing is going to work we need a fresh election if the fresh election does not come we're going to have a military solution here and i'll be sitting here explaining this to you zimbabwe is on the verge either we go back to fresh election or we're going to go to a military solution uh, the military guys are very very strong and they're the guys who are going to provide direction if the politicians fail to provide direction so i believe that if we don't get this sorted out the the military solution is not the best option because it means we're gonna go a long time without going back to civilian life <laughs> because once the the military guys take over they will take the military away and that is not what we want right now and i also don't think the military guys want to take the military solution i just believe that in the absence of order uh, then the the military guys will eventually have to provide that direction to everyone so let, let's have those fresh elections I, I believe that is where we all need to go so let's quickly look at the newspapers i want to see if the herald is out if the herald is out i'll give you what it says if there's nothing in the herald uh, then we can bring this to an end uh, let's look at the herald zimbabwe zimbabwe will always win that was yesterday's headline today the herald has not published as yet let's look at the chronicle newspaper if the chronicle is published and if the Chronicle is published, we'll give you that. If they haven't, we'll leave that. Uh, I am not seeing anything here in the Chronicle. So let's look at B Metro. So I, I tried to give you all the, the newspapers that are there. And if there's nothing, there's nothing. So from my checking here, there is nothing new in all the newspapers except for the Newsday newspaper, which is leading with uh, Wikino Chivayo. Uh, Wikino is saying he's going to be the youngest billionaire in zimbabwe but i explained to william to, to wikino that there is one thing that he hasn't done and if wikino does not do that thing he's going to lose everything i i've, I've told wikino that he eventually he's going to end up in jail if he doesn't do what i told I, I told him to do or which i told him i would tell him to do there is one thing that you need to do if you're a billionaire and if you don't do that thing you lose everything now, all the billionaires have got one thing in common and uh that is my secret that I'm going to tell to work now. I'm not giving away cars. Giving away cars is not a secret. Now let's go to the recap and then we'll look at the comments. We say that my sources, Gambako Media sources, have exclusively exclusively revealed that Mnangagwa is on the verge of firing General Sanyatwe, Enselem Sanyatwe, or moving him to another different position. So if the original position uh, plan was to move him to become commander of the Zimbabwe Defense Forces, move out uh, General Valerio Spanda into the Vice President's replace Mohadi and then I do not know who was going to take command of the ZNA but currently the plan has probably changed or is likely changed or is said to have changed and he's probably going to be assigned to a position into an embassy as an ambassador again so let's look at that within the next few months that is likely going to happen and as I said to you these are my sources Things don't always happen the way I say here. For example, we said Nangagwa's government is going to come to an end, end of April. You saw what Nangagwa did. He went and changed the currency. He did everything that he could. He created, he removed the auction system. So people make moves. It's like when an airplane is about to crash. It doesn't mean to just go down. People will try something. I always tell people who are scared of flying. So don't think Nangagwa is going to go down without a fight. He's going to go down with a fight. So obviously, the, the Mnangagwa thing, uh, situation and government 
the post Mnangagwa era has started. You're not going to see Mnangagwa at the end of five years. It's going to be gone. But it will take time and it will be dirty. Very, very dirty. You are going to see a lot happening very, very soon. And these are some of the things I'm giving you here. So let's look at the comments very quickly. Mkoma Limans, good morning to you. Mkoma Falcon, good morning to you. Mkoma Tinashe, good morning to you. Uh, morning to all the guys here. And thank you to everyone who contacts me. And we have long, long chats. Unfortunately, because of the quantity of people that I talk to, sometimes I'm not able to answer your, your, your calls. But we will sort that out. The plan that we have is we're going to have our head office in Harare. And you to be walking. I'll make sure that there will be a place for everyone who supports this channel to come in. So it will be we, we, we have an open space. That is the plan and the promise that I have for you guys. And then Mkoma Blessing says, since 2017, after the Mugabe removal issue, until today, Pambofa Majino was Mangani. Is it no more? If not, then why not stop the early before they lost another key person in the army? Mukasa Muka Ami Munopera one by one. Yes, I want to agree with you, Mkoma Blessing. This death of the generals is not normal. It's too much. Uh, currently, we're almost over 50 generals that have died. Someone is clearing house. Uh, what my brother generals will be calling draining the swamp, right? That's what's happening here. We, we have a situation here, and, and someone has to understand what's happening. The death of the generals, the deaths are too much. And I don't know if these guys have a plan because they need to have a plan to deal with it. Because after one comes another. And who is next? That is the question that you have to ask yourself. And what is the outcome? What is the end result? We need a very strong military and we can't afford to lose all the skills that we're losing right now. And it's important that no one ends up taking over the army through the back door. <laughs> that could happen. And then Mkoma Roba says, the Kabbalah sends the kids to better overseas schools while they ru ruin the education system here. Yes, education is dead everywhere. Uh, you will see that in the next few years. An educated person and one who is not educated, they're just the same. What you need now, um, Koma, is a plan of how to understand what is coming, the new order. There is a new order that is coming. And I always tell people that the new order is for you to be a, uh, having a platform. So if you want to make money, so I'm giving you advice here. You must have a platform. So a platform means you must be able to have a following and you must be able to help other people. You must be able to work as a group with other people. It doesn't mean you have to be online. But let's say you are Zimbabweans in the UK or Zimbabweans in Zimbabwe or Zimbabweans in Mutari. You must have a platform of some sort because everything is moving to a platform. And education won't be important. What would be important is your connections. And everything is changing. So everything is going to change. The government is changing. You see that we are broadcasting here. And we broadcast every day. In the past, this was not possible. I can assure you that there is no single person in Zimbabwe who doesn't watch Gambakwe. And I'm talking from the top to the bottom. Similarly, the, you, you in your area where you are, you need to create something that will attract the attention of everyone. Those are what we call platforms. And in the future, people with platforms are going to be the leaders, not people in government. So government is not where everything is. Government is going to be an administrator of uh, taxes, an administrator of uh, roads and cleaning up and all those kind of things. But where everything is going and where leadership is going is platforms. So create your own platforms. That is why you see good Chamisa is moving away from the political parties. He is going to what he calls a movement and uh, he's creating a news channel that is the right direction and always why i was criticizing today bt for lacking a platform because he will if he needs to talk he has to call blessed Mshanga, he has to call a newspaper whereas in the in the future where you need to go is where you can just wake up and switch on the phone and start talking to people and that is where it's going that is why you see that we've gone to TikTok. we're now moving to TikTok. that is where most of the uh, short things that we're going to do is coming from we're going to start going live on tiktok within the next few months you have to go where the audience is but you have to create a following you have to create a platform that is what i i, I, I can say in terms of what you've said here and then you said you didn't cover the death of general gage 
in an accident two weeks ago. <laughs> I don't know, Mkoma. Uh, Let's Google General Rugege. Right, General Rugege. Let's Google. I, I'm Googling here for you. Uh, I don't think General Rugege had an accident. Okay, they, they says to April. Retired Erasmus Rugege has died uh, in a fatal head on collision. His relative, General Engelbert Rugege, confirmed the sad news to a Mashingo publication. So let's show you the accident. You are right, Mkoma. I apologize for this. This escaped me. I do not know how I didn't see this. Uh, but I do not know the significance of General Rugege. So let's look at uh, this. Um, uh, story here. So this is in the Zim I newspaper of my brother Smbach Kanza. So that is the head-on collision here of Erasmus Rugeje. So I will do a bit more research here on what this was all about. So you can go to Zim I of 2 April and you will look at the death of uh, Erasmus Rugeje. It's over here. So I will, I will have a, a look at that. That is Bikita. And I see Kashop, that shop there. Uh, I wonder what that shop is. I hope that is not my village because that looks like my village. Uh, that was at Marigere Business Center. So at Marigere Business Center, that's not my, my village. So please go and have a look at that. Uh, and apologies, Mkoma, for missing this rugged accident. Uh, I don't know how that, ha that didn't happen. But I'll quickly look at it. As I said, the massive changes in the military and the guys in the military must make sure they protect themselves. Uh, they don't get killed by whoever is killing them. <laughs> Otherwise, you see like if you look at uh, Veja, my understanding is that he was top top in terms of special forces. He was bigger than special forces. That is my understanding. So if someone who is bigger than special forces is killed, what about a normal general? So be careful if you if you are in the army. And then Mukoma Isaac says, "Good morning, Gambakwe. Are the Zeva guys a radical movement? Three months are gone. No, no, Mukoma Isaac. Three months are not gone. They, they still have a month." So they still have a month to go. But we had Zifa here last week. They they said that they want to give dialogue a chance. Mnangagwa is agreed to, to dialogue. So let's see what is happening. There's dialogue taking place. But Chamisa is not in the dialogue. Let's see if that is going to be changed so that Chamisa is in the dialogue. It's important for us to have a fresh election. Because what Mnangagwa has done is not right. It's a mess and everything is falling apart. So let's wait and see if the dialogue is going to result in a fresh election. Because as I said, if a fresh election is not held, we're going to have a military solution. So I want to end it here. Uh, and you can look at the prophecy by Dr. Ian Grove here, which uh, TF is saying. He saw a constitution being brought out, but nobody opened it and they discussed not where the event happened. So I think uh, you can also go and look at the prophecies. That I, I watch a lot of prophecies. I talk to a lot of prophets. And my favorite prophet, as I said to you, Prophet Advocate Joshua, you can always follow him there. So thank you very much, everyone. And I would like to think that we should end it here because there's a lot we have to cover. Let's keep having the conversation. I'll come back tonight if there's anything massive that happens. But otherwise, I'll see you in the mor tomorrow morning. Thank you very much, everyone, and a good day.